Hey everyone, it is day 15 of Vlogmas. It is a gray and gloomy day today. It's raining a little bit here. And as much as I would love to get back into bed and just relax today and watch movies, I can't do it. I have lots of things that I wanna get done today, but I have been so tired yesterday and maybe the last two or three days. I think just all of the Christmas shopping and cleaning around the house and shop updating and all the things, probably Vlogmas too. It kind of hit me yesterday. I was so tired. I could barely keep my eyes open to edit my vlog, but I have a few things I really want to push through on today, which is Wednesday because Thursday and Friday, I'm kind of taking it easy. I've got plans to just do a few things around the house and relax on Friday. I've got a really fun adventure for tomorrow with a friend. So I have a few things to finish. I set up all of that leather in my shop yesterday and put everything out on shelves really, really nicely. But what you didn't see is the mess that that created around my room. So today I wanna to go in there and do a little bit of a tidy up because it's kind of a mess, it's chaos actually. I've got things to kind of sort through and organize so that I can get in there to do some shipping today and wrapping Christmas presents this weekend. Feeling pretty good about the Christmas situation, but I do want to do a little bit of research and planning today for my Christmas baking. I started to pull out some of the recipes and cookbooks that I want to flip through, and I think I'm going to make a list. I don't bake tons and tons at once like some people do. I prefer to bake one thing every couple of days, uh, maybe two or three before Christmas, and then I continue with some treats and things the week that we're home afterwards because it's just too much for us. We all love the Christmas cookies and the treats and it's nice to have two or three to pick from at the holiday time. But I find they tend to go a little bit stale. I know you can freeze them, but I don't have a lot of freezer space right now and I don't really give out cookies, especially right now with um, everything going on. So I'm gonna pick my two or three baked treats to do before Christmas Eve so that we have a nice little selection. I have a couple of things that I know I want to add to the list that might be after Christmas so that while we are lounging around in that glorious week between Christmas or Boxing Day and New Year's, we can have more treats that week. And I think that's it. I have some shipping I want to get done today because I got a few orders for leather. Thank you so much. I am going to try to get all of those out today. And then if anything else comes in this week, they probably won't go out until Friday because Thursday I will not be home. Lots of fun things planned in the next few days. So I am just going to try to get what I need done today but also take breaks and take it easy because I am just really feeling exhaustion today. I've got the dark circles under my eyes popping out. My back is a little bit sore and um, I'm just gonna try to take it easy while I get a few things done. I've been a little bit frustrated with myself the last couple of days because I have not been able to keep up on my advent socks. I got to Day 12, I think, on the 11th, I was really good. I kept up with it. I even got one stripe ahead because I thought I would give myself a little bit of extra time to get those heels in. But of course, that just sort of broke my momentum up and I've been so tired that I just didn't really want to put in any heels. But last night, I set myself up in the family room with my knitting and some notions. And I put something on my iPad and just made an attempt to get it going. I didn't get really far,
but at least I got it started. And here is sock number one. I am using this dark denim mini skein from Chelsea Yarns to put in a traditional heel flap and gusset. So I got my heel flap started, but I just have been so tired that even knitting is not really happening right now. The last couple of mornings when I sit down with my coffee in my chair in the front room, I've just been in a zone where I'm just thinking about things that need to be done. I'm just taking a few moments to clear my head and I haven't even had the energy to knit. So I'm going to try to start doing this at night or if I take a break sort of in the early evening because I really want to get these in and kind of plow through them so that I have a really nice pair of new socks for Christmas day. Before I head into my workroom to tackle that mess, I thought I would get my Christmas notebook, gather a few of the cookbooks with recipes that I've been thinking about, and just make a couple of lists and sort out what's coming up for me in the next week. I'm not planning on doing any baking today or tomorrow. I probably won't start until the weekend actually, but I think making a list will just kind of settle my mind and then I won't be worried about what I'm making, when, do I have the ingredients and all of that kind of stuff. So this is what I've pulled out to start. There are a couple of things I know for sure that I want to make that I make every year. And I had totally forgotten that I purchased that donut pan in the first week of Vlogmas. It's just been so busy. And that's something I definitely want to make after Christmas. So I remembered one of my favorite cookbooks, The New England Farm Girl by Jessica Robinson. I love this book. I've shared it many times. It really has um, a fall feeling to me. There's tons of apple recipes and pumpkin things in here. And I remembered that she had two donuts that I really want to try. I'm pretty sure I'm going to try both while we are testing out those pans. The first one is for apple cider donuts. They look delicious. And then I also really want to make these old fashioned pumpkin donuts. She has tons of beautiful recipes in here. I might do a quick flip through. She has great, oh, these are amazing. I've made these many, many times. Raspberry oatmeal bars. She has lots of good recipes in here. It might be nice to try something new after Christmas. But I'm definitely putting the donuts on my list. So I'll put that on my list for baking after the holidays. I pulled out this book, The Bread Toast Crumbs by Alexandra Stafford because I know I'm making this for, um, for Christmas. So I'm not sure if I'm baking it on Christmas Eve or I might actually do it on Christmas day. No, I'll probably do it on Christmas Eve so that it's all ready. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I had all the ingredients, which I think I do. So that is going in my inspiration pile. And I will just check my grocery list and, um, Make sure I don't forget about that. I have two cookie recipes that are non-negotiable around here. The first one is Glenn's absolute favorite. It's the one on this cover. It's from Martha Stewart's Cookies. I actually found this recipe. Um, she used to have a Christmas cookie magazine that came out every year. She might still have it, I'm not sure. And that's where I first found this recipe. I've cut it out and it's in one of my notebooks. And I realized later on, a couple of years later when I purchased this, it's the one on the cover. It is so good. Uh, here they are, chewy chocolate gingerbread cookies. I know you can find this one online too. It's very, very popular. You can see my book is split open here. This one has to be made and I need to make sure I put fresh ginger on my grocery list. 
because that requires lots and lots of ginger. It's so yummy. The other non-negotiable recipe I've shared, I think pretty much every Vlogmas, are for shortbread meltaways. And I have made this for so long. I've shared it with so many people that I've actually renamed it Sandy's Shortbread. It's not my recipe, but it is definitely a must make for us. I got it in the Robin Hood flower little booklet when they came out. I've shared those before. I'm actually gonna pull them out because I just love them. I find them so nostalgic and filled with good recipes. And that's where I found that one. So this is definitely a must. I was looking through my little tin of recipes that has different things from when I first got married, these typed up ones are actually from my mom. And this recipe is from my grandmother. So she used to make these and they were my favorite. And so even, even as I got older, my grandmother would make me a little tin of these. And I was just remembering that and just thinking how delicious they were and how sweet that was. And I might, I might want to make those. They are uh, we call them chocolate balls, but they have chopped dates and coconut and peanut butter inside. And then they are rolled into a ball and dipped into chocolate. Super yummy. She also made peanut butter balls. So I pulled that out. Those are kind of fussy ones, so I'm not too sure. I don't always make them. I pulled this one out too because I know Camden would love this. And I have a huge bag of peanut butter chips. And then I was just sort of thinking about some other ones. I have one from my mother-in-law for Empire Biscuits. We all love those. I don't always make these before Christmas. Like this could be one that I make a little bit after Christmas. And then we have really delicious cookies afterwards. And my mom's traditional sugar cookies. I rarely make them, but I just pulled it out to see. Um, and I know she has a version of these that are also from my grandmother for molasses cookies. And they're really nice. I think I made them in an earlier Vlogmas. And I do have a Pizzelli iron, and I thought about making those this year, but we will see. So these are all kind of maybes, except for the shortbread melt -aways. I also pulled out this Baking for the Holidays, the new one. I need to flip through this one and mark off any pages with some sticky notes because I haven't done that yet. And this could be a book that I pull something new from this year. And my Jamie Oliver's Christmas book. I often will purchase, or I used to purchase, a big bag of, um, what do you call it? I think it's in this section here. I made them one year, honeycomb. So there is a store here that sells all kinds of different chocolate treats, including um, caramel apples and sponge toffee dipped in chocolate. And I used to buy Glenna bag to put in his stocking every year, but it's quite a small bag and it was really pricey. And then when I got this book, I saw it. I made it one year, he loved it. I don't think I made it last year. I'm not sure if I'm getting my years mixed up, but I don't think I did because it just gets kind of messy, cutting it and eating it there were crumbs everywhere. So I took a break last year, but I'm kind of thinking that I might wanna make this one again. It's really delicious. It's not very difficult to make it. So I think I am going to add that one to the to make pile. And then I pulled this book out. This is a huge hard cover book. I um, I can't remember where I shared it, but one of my favorite books that I discovered in the last year or two 
is called, I think, Cast Iron, The Ultimate Cookbook. I've shared lots of recipes that I made with it. It's one of my new favorites. It is a huge book, just like this, and it has tons of information that I really enjoy looking through about cast iron skillets. So in the last couple of months, I discovered that they have a whole series of different ultimate cookbooks that go along with this. And so I picked up the desserts one and it does not disappoint. So I have tons of cookbooks, but I don't really have ones like this that are all in one, like anything you are looking for, any kind of icing or filling or pastry, dough, just basically, and it's almost like an encyclopedia book. And I really love this type of reference. My cast iron one is one of my favorite books. And so I knew I had to have this. I kept my fingers crossed when I ordered it that it was just as good and it really is. I haven't really baked anything from it yet, but I have gone through and I just thought I would show you the beginning so that you could see what I'm talking about. It's just beautiful. So there's a little bit to read. I think about the origin of pastries. Um, it's really beautiful. Talks about essential ingredients. There is so much information in here. So it goes through different ingredients. Oops, it's a little bit. I'm going to switch hands because I find it really hard to flip through pages with that hand. So you can see there are sections for cookies and it's so big. I'm not going to show you everything, but I've already marked off some of the ones that appeal to me. So orange spice cookies. I love orange flavored everything. Nope, not those ones. Orange and rosemary shortbread. I thought this looked really good. Chewy ginger cookies. Now I won't be making this one for Christmas because I have the other gingerbread, but I thought this would be a really good simple cookie recipe. I thought this might be really nice either Boxing Day or even New Year's Eve or New Year's Day when we have our meal, Molten Lava Cakes. Lemon Tea Cake. I love baking really simple cakes, kind of like coffee cakes or tea cakes. They had a recipe in here for apple cider donuts as well and chocolate cake donuts, and French crullers, yum. And then I have more donuts back here. There's even a section at the back that goes through, um, I think famous um, bakers, pastry chefs. There's even a huge drink section. It's a really beautiful book. It's so beautiful that if, you, if you've been watching Christina from the Chelsea Yarns Vlogmas, in one of her Vlogmases in the last week or so, she received a pizza cookbook and it looked so good and we love making homemade pizza here. It's a big thing for us too. And I don't really have a pizza book. So I looked up the one that she got. I couldn't really find it. I don't know if it's not available to order right now or if it's just not available in Canada. Anyways, I couldn't find it, but I did notice that they have a pizza, the ultimate cookbook. So I ordered that one to add to my little collection. I'm very excited because that means I will have three of these in the series. And I think when I get my new shelf that's going in the family room, these are some of the books that I'm going to put over there because they're really, they'll be easy to grab. They are really great resources when you just need a basic recipe. So it's a beautiful book. I am really enjoying this one. I sat down last night um, with my knitting and with this, and I just put in some sticky notes. 
So I think this is gonna be a really nice one for the holidays. I'm not sure if there's anything in here that I wanna make before Christmas, but it's a really good reference. So I think this is the other book that I got this year. So I'm just going to flip through this one, put some sticky notes in, and then start making my list in my Christmas journal. I flipped through the Baking for the Holidays cookbook by Sarah Kiefer, and as much as I love this book, it is really beautiful and filled with gorgeous recipes for Christmas. I've only tagged two, and they are both recipes that I think I will make after Christmas, that week in between Christmas and New Year's where everyone is home. I thought morning buns would be perfect. I actually don't enjoy making cookies that much. I just find it's a huge process. Um, scooping out cookies or uh, even if they're just drop cookies or slicing cookies, tray after tray and putting them on racks, it's just not my favorite process. I much prefer baking like a quick loaf or bundt cakes or muffins, things like that. So I thought this would be perfect for a brunch while everyone is home. And then I also thought these cruffins would be really nice too. So I've put both of these on my list. This is my after Christmas meal ideas page where I will put meals here. And then I put some desserts here. So I jotted down the molten chocolate cakes I've got these two recipes from the Baking for the Holidays book, and I jotted down the donuts so I don't forget about that. And I put the books that they're all in so it will be easy to just look at my list, grab the book, and go. And here is my final baking list for this year. These are the three that I will definitely be making. The chewy gingerbread cookies from Martha Stewart, the shortbread meltaways, and the chocolate dipped honeycomb from Jamie Oliver. I've got two maybes here. The first one is this orange and rosemary shortbread. I'm not really sure if I will get to it, but I wouldn't mind having these. They look really pretty. And I know Glenn and I would enjoy those with coffee or tea. So I've jotted that down in the book that it's from. And then I forgot about this magazine, so I just pulled out the Joy the Baker Holiday Recipes magazine that I picked up at the grocery store. And I jotted down this one as another maybe. Then I've got my panettone listed for Christmas dessert. And like I mentioned before, I'm going to keep my eye out for a bouche de Noel for Christmas day. I just think that would make my life a lot easier because we're going to have all of these treats in the house. We'll have chocolates and all kinds of goodies. Um, we don't always want a lot for dessert. So this is my list. I feel so much better now that at, at least I've gotten it out of my head and put it down on paper. I just need to make sure that I check a couple of the new recipes for ingredients and I will put them on my grocery list. So even the maybes, just so that I have the supplies that week while we are home, I won't need to run out and get anything. Um, like I would need to make sure that I have rosemary for those shortbread cookies and I think red food coloring for these. So I think that's it. I feel so much better. I'm going to stack up all my books, put my um, Christmas notebook on my kitchen counter and I am going to head into my workroom to get a bunch of organizing and shipping done next. <laughs> 